Wayne Historical Society. Today's tidbit is sponsored by corporate members, Design Studio and Honey Too. These two storefronts just happen to be side by side in historic uptown Statesboro on West Main Street. They just happen to be owned by very successful business girls, and both of them are my dear cousins on my paternal side. Mary Ann Franklin is the interior decorator of Statesboro, and Lazada Brown Oglesby is the caterer in these parts. As you know, she does our monthly lunch that we all rave over. My all-time favorite go-to tried-and-true cookbook is Southern Cooking by Mrs. S. R. Dull. I have Totsie's copy from 1941, and my copy I bought while I was living in Atlanta during the 1980s. Here is a page used through the years by Topsy, Mama, and me, and notice all the vanilla extract stains. Henrietta Stanley, nicknamed Henny, was born in Lawrence County in 1863. She married Samuel Rice Dull, who was from Virginia, and they settled in Atlanta. When he became seriously ill in the early 1900s, she began selling homemade food to support their family. This became so popular that she built a very successful catering business. She was also asked by folks like Atlanta Gaslight, Macy's, and White Lily Flower to endorse and demonstrate their products. In 1920, Henny's life changed forever. Assisted by a young friend named Margaret Mitchell, Henny began writing a weekly column named Mrs. Dull's Cooking Lessons for the Atlanta Journal. This was published until 1945. In 1928, she published the influential cookbook entitled Southern Cooking, which compi was compiled of over 1,300 recipes. This picture shows the copyright from 1928. This introduced Southern cuisine to a nationwide audience. It also adapted traditional recipes for preparation with modern gas and electric appliances. Remember, at the turn of the last century, everyone cooked on a wood fire stove. These are cooking plates and the doors from my grandmother Franklin's stove at 317 Savannah Avenue that I have repurposed into a fire cooking pit right here at the High Lake. Mrs. Dull did a reprint of the book in 1941. Since that time, it's remained in print. Henny died in 1964 at the age of 100. This cookbook is complete from appetizers and soups to desserts and preserves. It has suggested menus, the gracious rules of table service, and many household hints. No Southern bride would think of setting up her household without a copy of this book. It is truly a Southern institution. Some things are made only by first referring to Southern cooking. Here's the recipe for peach pickles. Love this comment. Boil until peaches can be stuck with straw. Here's my finished project. A true gift of love is a jar of green tomato pickles. Anyone who's made them will agree. These delicacies take three days to make and can be a little messy. Here's the recipe. So many folk ask me, why are they so crisp, Virginia Ann? As Henny says in black and white, right here in the cookbook, the lime makes the tomatoes crisp. Like the name, the pickle is wonderful. Pound cake was originally a pound of each of the main ingredients. Here's the recipe from Mrs. Dull. Mr. Bill loves some pound cake topped with fresh whipped cream infused with Mexican vanilla. I looked for fun at Miss Dull's rules for table settings. I know now where one of my main pet peeves originated. It was also Totsies and Mama, so it may be a gene factor also. Never, and I say never, put silverware on a folded napkin. A guest shouldn't have to reset the table to place his napkin in his or her lap. Here is the picture from Mrs. Dull's Bible on Southern cooking. Well, until next week, here's to great eating, and remember, don't slap that fork on the napkin. Bye.